Hello, everyone. My name is Tim Lazar. Welcome to our podcast. I'm coming to you uh, and representing two companies today, two of uh, companies I'm a partner in. The first one is Lazar Yoast Marketing and Design. The second company is called The Convenience Marketing Group, which, which really specializes in the convenience store industry. But you can visit both of those websites, and I'll give you more information at the end of the podcast today. Anyhow, today I've been thinking a lot about uh, new ways to market your company and uh, when we typically get engaged with clients, we will take them through four steps as we try to differentiate their companies and get them a marketing plan put together. And the four steps that I want to cover today, the first one is really how to un uncover the value that your company creates. And we'll dive into that a little bit further. The second one is then how, how do we creatively differentiate that value out into the marketplace? The third step is then we tell the target, and this is really the, the nuts and the bolts and the tactics of our overall marketing plan. And then the last thing is the learning and the virtuous cycle that we start to create uh, with a marketing plan for a client. So the first one is you need to, when we sit down with a client and we talk about uh, their organization, we start to really focus on uncovering the new value that their company is creating. And you might be surprised, and we are typically too, that a lot of times CEOs and presidents of companies haven't thought that deeply about the value that they're creating in the marketplace and for a specific target audience. Now, I'd refer you, there's a great book by a guy named Ron Baker. It's called Value Pricing. Uh, you can look it up on Amazon, but I highly recommend that to just kind of spur and challenge your thinking on value pricing. But anyhow, we get surprised sometimes where clients uh, are not really thinking so much about value, but what they're really thinking about are the features and the benefits of either their product or their service. And this is really some old school thinking. It's not wrong thinking, but there's a better way to start to dive into your company and think about the value that it creates. And one of the ways that we spur that thinking is we have clients think about specific situations that their target audience is in. Um, and we tell them that value, if you create value, it feels like something very, very specific to the target audience that you're trying to reach and, and who you're trying to sell to. It really, once you uh, create this, these value type of programs, it starts to flip the clients thinking about my goodness this is a lot of value that you're creating for and 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 for the price that you're offering and a lot of times uh, that value that you create is around a very specific problem and with clients we s tend to just try to define it uh, and get very very specific and drill down on the particular problems that they are trying to solve and really blow those out a bit too and, and start to explore them a lot farther as far as you know what's the problem creating the problem problem uh, and getting to the ground truth of what they're trying to create value around. And I would also add that uh, it's my belief and ideology that there's absolutely nothing in this world that you cannot add value to or create value around. And I mean, you, the, the, the examples are just about, you know, everywhere in the world. Um, Amazon is a great example of a, a company that creates value around problems that people have, which is you don't want to go out and shop. Amazon is there for you. And Amazon is an invention and an innovation machine. I would highly recommend you uh, read the new book that uh, just came out. It's called Working Backwards. Again, you can find it on Amazon, but a terrific, uh, a terrific second half of the book talks about becoming an invention machine. Uh, some other th uh, co companies that create value, I mean, in our neck of the woods here in uh, western Pennsylvania and uh, the east coast is Sheets Convenience Stores. If you look at convenience stores, typically they sell a lot of the very same products uh, it, it, within their store. I mean, they, they just do. Sheets has differentiated themselves by creating value around the experience, around the user experience, around the brand, around the expectation. Plus, they've become very inventive in, in terms of creating products, uh, services, apps, connection with their customers that generates more and more value around a convenience 
experience. Uh, look at other companies like DoorDash, uh, especially in the pandemic, or Uber Eats. Um, one of my favorite examples that I like to use is when you go into, uh, this will be another convenience store example, but just to make the point, is some convenience stores sell a product or they it's they don't ch charge, but they um, uh, add it to fountain drinks, and it's called, you'll see it as chewy ice sometimes. And this is a product that uh, people add to their fountain drink. But think about this. I mean, it's a way to differentiate water within a convenience store. It's a terrific idea. Uh, and, and again, I, my point is that if you can differentiate ice, there's almost nothing in this world that you cannot differentiate. So step number one, focus on uncovering the new value that your company creates. So sit down with your team. Try to brainstorm the new value and those programs that you're creating to solve problems for your spe specific target audience. So that's step number one around value. Step number two then is you want to start to creatively differentiate that value, right? You want to differentiate it. And the question is, how do you do it? And what you want to do first is you want to look at your competitors and you want to think of your competitors in your categories as basically sharks swirling around in a tank or, you know, almost being like a wrestler or a, a MMA fighter in a cage match. It's, a, it's literally a fight to the death with your competitors and you need to have that mindset and that attitude going in there so that you can differentiate the value that you're creating. You have to remember that competitors or your competitors, they're never passive and they're never static. I mean, they're trying to take business away from you. They're trying to invent as well. It's not you uh, just doing it by yourself. So you have to have that mindset going in. And I would uh, also suggest that you take into account four forces that are affecting both you and your competitors at any given time. And uh, these next four things that I'll cover, uh, I'm borrowing from Michael Porter in his book called... Um, competitive strategy. Uh, and they're just as appropriate today as they were a number of years ago. So uh, you have to look at the threat. Number one is you have to look at the threat of new competitors in your category, especially non-traditional competitors. So again, if we go back to the Amazon example in the bookstore, retail brick and mortar bookstore world, Amazon was a non-traditional distribution company that used the combination of their distribution system and also online ordering to disrupt the retail bookstore category. So that was a threat of a new competitor coming into uh, a category that was non-traditional. You also have to look at the power of your customers. Uh, what other choices do they have beside you? Uh, if all things being equal, it's just a, it's a price point commodity, or there's really not much differentiating factor between competitors, you have to look at that. So how much power do your customers have? One thing that people don't think about is how much, uh, or companies don't think about, is how much power do their suppliers have over them? Um, and again, Walmart would be a great example of that. You know, Walmart goes to a number of different suppliers of products and basically negotiates you know, price, 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 down, down, down. And I've heard it one time before with a client that we had is Amazon looks to put a couple of suppliers out of business every year. Um, not sure that I agree with that. However, um, if you're a company that relies on suppliers that are very, very powerful and can control some of your destiny, you need to take that into account as you start to work to differentiate and market your company. So look at the power of the suppliers and what they have over you and try to extricate yourself from that power that they might have over you because that'll be uh, a way to deliver more value. And the last thing you need to look at uh, are the threat of substitutes in your category. Here's a great example. Uh, you know, today, I mean, we're looking at it right now in, in our country, is that, you know, gas-powered cars um, are eventually going to be, are being replaced by electric power cars. And, the you know, the political system is starting to drive some of that as well as it is in other countries. But that's a, a great example of 
a, a company that relies on a product, meaning you know petroleum, could be disrupted and totally displaced by a substitute of electric for a gasoline car. So you have to look at those those really four factors when you're starting to differentiate your company uh, and just take them into account as far as creating value and differentiating your company. And what we're ultimately after here as we do this brainstorming and some of this analysis, what we're really trying to do is boil that all down into a statement, a positioning statement for your product or your service or your company that would go something like this. We are the only blank that creates value to make blank go away for blank. And the final blank would be the target audience. So I'll say that again. You're trying to position your company and say, we are the only blank that creates massive value to make blank, which would be the problem, go away for the target audience. Now at that point, you've got basically a positioning statement. It could be for your company, for a product, for a service. And this is then where you turn it over to the creative folks. And this is where the magic and the mar- of the marketing process really starts to take place because you've now decided to focus and sacrifice and you don't want to be all things you've decided and I would recommend that don't you don't want to be all things to all people but when you start to focus and sacrifice things away from this positioning statement you're then going to get to a point where what you're saying about your company is much more important than where you say it and how you say it okay I'll say that again that what you say about your product or your service or your company is far more important than where you say it, i.e. what the media might be, or how you say it, i.e. the creative way that, that you might say it. So focus on the what you deliver. What's the value that you're delivering? And everything else, uh, the where and the how, will, will follow that, but it'll also fall into place and be very effective. But I would recommend that you do those things in that order. And now step number three is you're basically going to tell your target. Right? You're going to tell your target audience the value that you're delivering. And you're going to do that in multiple ways, in multiple media. And you're going to do it frequently. And you're going to keep spinning it in a way that you're saying the same message over and over again, but in different and more creative ways. And if you look at companies that are really well positioned, it seems like they might be saying things uh, or have multiple messages, but many, many times it's really just focused on one or two core messages, but they just keep repeating them and spinning them in different ways. And it do, they do it frequently enough where their message eventually starts to break through and then customers start to respond or clients start to respond and engage to them and do business with, with, with them. And then the final step is really where you start to drive sales, Right. Uh, this is where your marketing plan has already been implemented. You've gotten all those tactics uh, going and you've got a marketing plan implemented in, in the marketplace. And basically what you're going to be doing now is measuring. You're going to be learning and reapplying your strategy as you go. So as you turn the wheel, this is basically like a, um, like a, a, a really a drive shaft uh, or a, you're spinning up a flywheel. It takes a lot of effort to do that. But once you get it spinning, it becomes much more efficient in terms of how you deliver your messages. You also have to remember that your marketing strategy and your positioning that you just created, it's never static, right? It's, it's, it's always moving. It's always evolving. It's always being affected by those four dynamics that I mentioned earlier that Michael Porter talks about in competitive strategy. So, you know, once your marketing plan is in the marketplace and people are responding to it, your competitors, again, they're not going to be static. They'll respond to it. You need to be proactive and respond to that again. Uh, and one of the things about this process that we find with our clients is it's really a lot of fun. Uh, it's work, yes, but it's also a lot of fun. And a lot of times what you find is people in your, on your team get very, very excited because they can see your message coming into focus, getting a lot clearer and cleaner with a lot more muscle behind it. And then once you get the differentiating factor and the marketing and the creative put into place, um, people rally around it, it and Uh, they get excited about it. They really do. So that's how we recommend, again, the four steps are uncover the new value your company is creating, focus on that. Then after you do that, 
work to creatively differentiate that value in the marketplace by really asking, asking yourself some of those key questions. Uh, step three then is tell your target. And then step number four is the virtuous learning cycle. My name is Tim Lazar. I'm a partner at Lazar Yost Marketing and Design and also a company called the Convenience Marketing Group. You can check us out at uh, LazarYost.com, L-A-Z-O-R-Y-O-S-T.com. You can check us out at ConvenienceMarketing.net or you can reach out to me at 412-423-0044 or you can email me at Tim Lazar, my name, T-I-M-L-A-Z as in zebra, O-R, at Comcast.net. Thanks for listening. I'm Tim Lazar, and I approved this message.